good evening and welcome to today's special session by shailesh gala on sensible use of rti and alternatives uh, which is organized by money life foundation's rti center and tarun mitra mandal before moving further may i invite shailesh up on the stage please thank you Uh, today, Shailesh, uh, with a focus on RTI, will explain the alternatives available for the redressal of grievances using other mechanisms. Uh, as you know, Shailesh is an RTI activist and engineer by profession. He is a core committee member of the Jan Adhikar Abhiyan and has been consistently providing guidance on RTI users and general public. He has drafted more than 200 applications and more than 15, uh, 50 appeals to the Central and State Information Commissions and other public authorities. He has been a volunteer with the Tarun Mitra Mandal since past 10 years. I mean, he joined Tarun Mitra Mandal in 2008, and he has been helping and guiding people on RTI issues since then. And he has also helped citizens to resolve their various issues related with the government bodies and other agencies. So before I hand over to uh, Shailesh, I have two small requests. Please switch off your mobile phones or keep it on silent. And if you have any queries, please keep it at the end so that let Shailesh finish his presentation. Then we'll have the question and answer. Thank you. Shailesh. Before we start, right, uh, when uh, Rajesh Bhai was coordinating uh, with uh, Money Life in terms of uh, conducting these seminars, and he approached me and asked me, which is your topic you, you want to take a session? Uh, when he asked me, there was one thing happening in my personal life. Uh, I was uh, basically, I have a five-year-old kid, and uh, I was giving him a storytelling session. I means I was having a storytelling uh, telling session with my kid, and I was uh, giving him a brief of Mahabharata. There was an interesting conversation between him and me. Uh, he he was he was very fascinated with the war and all the weapons that were getting used and uh, he kept on asking me questions uh, what what weapons uh, arjuna had what weapons uh, uh, karna had because these two were the like uh, face to face competitors i told him arjuna had a brahmastra and uh, uh, karna had a indrastra and uh, he was like uh, very curious when this fight would happen and what when, what will be the eventual fallout of that fight then suddenly when i was telling him the story i told him that somebody called ghatot kacha he was uh, on his way and he was like devastating the kaurava army and that time uh, karna was the senapati he was the chief uh, army officer for kauravas and uh, since he wanted to stop uh, ghatot kacha he used his indrastra and he was oh shit how can he do that he should have reserved it for uh, Arjuna, he Arjuna is his the main competitor, right? So I told, yeah, he should have, but he has to do what was necessary at that point of time. And what happened after that, you know, right? Arjuna killed him. He had nothing to defend. He had nothing to attack. So that's when I came to know that RTI is something like the Brahmastra or like uh, Indrastra. Basically, we should not use it unnecessarily, we should preserve it, and hence this topic makes more sense because it talks about sensible use of RTI. So, just taking that forward, uh, there was another episode that happened at the same time. I attended an appeal in Mumbai University. Uh, it was on behalf of a student who had filed an RTI application to get answer sheets. And uh, uh, basically, that person was uh, pursuing higher education, and they, he had, she had shifted to Guwahati. So on her behalf, I attended that appeal. And what I came to know over there is that they were denying information under the uh, under the reason that there is a parallel application process for getting answer sheets from Mumbai University. You have to apply within seven days. There were some norms uh, about that, and why you did not follow that? You 
should follow that. I am not going to give you under RTI. So I was definitely being an RTI activist. I was puzzled because if I'm asking anything in RTI, I should get, I expect them to uh, basically uh, respect the RTI Act and they should give us the information. Having a parallel process to get the same information is good, but RTI should not be rejected. So that was my grounds of appeal when I argued there. But I was somehow convinced with his argument also because it, if there is a process laid down by a organization for the same thing to di dispose the same information, why not use that channel and use RTI instead? So taking that as a background, I, I think this topic, of course, given by an RTI activist, but still asking everybody to use sensible, uh, use RTI sensibly, is something that I want to take it further. Okay. Question, I will not ask the very same question that everybody must be asking, how many of you have done RTI? I am not asking that. I would like to twist it a little bit. How many of you have used RTI for some public cause? Of course, Suchita ma'am, you, you don't have to tell that. But who has used RTI for a public cause vis-a-vis -vis -vis who have used RTI for some personal uh, issues they may have faced with a government body? On A side or B side? Yes, Both sides, okay. <laughs> Anybody else? I'll be taking, I'll be doing it day after tomorrow. For? Uh, for deputy register. For myself. Yeah. Deputy register. On, on what? Uh, society. For your society. Okay. Fine. So, uh, so this slide is basically why people are using RTI. It's more in terms of analyzing what are the various reasons people are doing RTI and what are the outcomes they are expecting. Of course, the first important reason is to expose abuse of power. When I say that, it's like uh, exposing scams and irregularities in government functioning or even for exposing corruption. So just to give you some examples, right? There are many examples you can search on internet, you can Google and you can see uh, CWG scam is an example, 2G scam is an example. And there are various such examples where RTI has helped to expose corruption, irregularities and so on. <coughs> Other reason for using RTI application is to seek information for advocacy or or some uh, purpose is like uh, using that information for research work. I think Money Life, of course, if they are publishing something like this, right, they would be using RTI, getting information, analyzing it, and generating public uh, reports or some uh, uh, outcomes out of it. So this is another purpose. Other than that, uh, if you see, right, for personal uh, reasons also, you can use, for example, if you want to give some evidence in a code, it's always important you use RTI, you get a certified copy of that uh, information and then you publish it uh, or you submit it in the court as evidence. So that is where people would be using RTI and that is a fair use of RTI. Other than that, if you see, right, the third reason is something that I want to focus on because that is where most of the sensibility of using RTI Act would come into picture. Uh, first is definitely process improvement. So to give you an example, right, Uh, there was a professor in IIT who used RTI Act to get information in terms of how the uh, admission processes are conducted or how uh, whether the admissions in IIT are uh, using fair means of uh, approvals. So in that way, if you see, he actually uh, filed a read petition to Supreme Court after getting information under RTI and he had various suggestions in terms of how this process can be more transparent and he was uploaded by Supreme Court for his efforts uh, in terms of improvising the process of admissions in IIT. So that was a very good example of how you can use RTI for improving deficiency in processes. Another example if you see right, <coughs> is. Uh, uh, I this is a very interesting thing because uh, there, there were two students uh, doing PhD with Yale University. What they did was they uh, filed some, uh, they basically gathered a group of slum dwellers and what they did with them is that uh, they, fo he found, they formed four action cards in Delhi. Okay, the first group just filed a normal application of getting ration card. Okay, second group what they did is they uh, 
apart from just submitting a normal application, they got one uh, recommendation from an NGO to get the ration card. He just, they just wanted to see which, which, uh, which one is the most effective way. The third group, actually, after, with submitting the uh, application for ration card, they also bribed the officer. Okay. And the fourth group, basically, after submitting a ration card, they followed it up with an RTA application. Now, any guesses who would have got the ration card earlier? The faster? Third one. <laughs> That's the obvious thing. <laughs> and then who would be the second? RTA. RTA. Exactly. So, so RTA. The first. Yeah, definitely. So, <laughs> no brainer there. <laughs> the bribe people, people who are paying bribe, got ration card first. Then, then came the RTI. So, basically, if you don't want to pay bribe, you should do RTI. Is that uh, the inference that we can draw? Mm -hmm. Else, you won't get a ration card. But if we are uh, using the RTI in this way, we just need to pause a little bit and think: uh, Is this the right way of using RTI? Because if I am applying for a ration card, I should get it irrespective of whether I use RTI or not, right? Absolutely. Okay, so that's where, uh, uh, let me just go to the next slide here. The purpose for what we are giving a, a RTI application is very important. See, RTI application, uh, RTI as a rule, right, or as an act, doesn't specify you as an applicant to uh, to disclose the reason why you are doing that RTI application. You are not supposed to tell anybody why you are doing an RTI application. But you yourself should know. You should be true to yourself in terms of you should know why I'm doing that RTI application and the reason for that or what is the final objective that I want to achieve after doing that RTI application, you should be very much clear about that. Because there are various reasons for which people are doing RTI applications. I have been uh, involved with Tarun Mitra Mundal for last 10 years and I have seen various applicants who are coming uh, to the center for guidance and they have various issues. Most of the issues are definitely the personal issues but sometimes it is a issue with the officer, he is harassing me, I want to uh, just uh, make a, a hell out of him and I want to just harass him or something and I want to do an RTI. It's like uh, I want to uh, find out when he is coming in, when, when he is going out and everything. So uh, we as a group, right, we normally do not uh, encourage such type of RTI applications. We try to uh, basically uh, tell them that this is not the right usage of RTI application and we send them back. So that's how we normally operate in our centers. <coughs> Then let me just pause a little, little bit. Okay, then, uh, yeah, so I'm on the second trend. So, revenge and harassment is one of the reasons why people can do RTI and we should avoid doing that. Another is create undue controversy. Now, this is like some people want to always come in lime, lime, limelight and they want to do RTI application. Uh, for example, if you say, right, uh, there are some RTI applications in the news where people are asking about uh, the amount of uh, money spent by Narendra Modi for his suits. I, I don't think how relevant that RTI application is but still people are asking that and just creating or what is the degree of uh, they want degree copy of uh, prime minister and how it is uh, okay everybody can have views yeah but uh, having uh, see uh, having an degree copy how it is going to help the applicant i'm not sure <laughs> What is the purpose of having the degree certificate of Prime Minister? See, our law doesn't specify the Prime the Minister. Transparency. No, and he's claimed in his affidavit that the purpose is the transparency. It should be produced. Okay, <laughs> anyway, so people may disagree with me, but anyways, I am somehow not very much uh, convinced with uh, doing such type of RTA application because it's not solving any purpose. <coughs> Then uh, next is definitely frivolous applications. Now uh, we will have a laundry list of frivolous applications because if you just Google for funny RT applications, you will get around hundreds of such examples. If, if I have to quote one or two, right? Somebody had asked uh, the PMO, when are the Ache Din going to start? Which is the exact date <laughs> when Ache Din, you will declare this as an Ache Din for our <laughs> country. So it's that type of... <laughs> Of course, every every everybody has a perspective, but how how that information is going to help us as citizens or as a nation, I'm not sure. So, definitely, 
there was one more appli application where a person had asked about a person uh, i think it is in the mcd department of delhi where a person had asked about a specific officer he he used he basically eats lot of pan and he has asked what are the ingredients of that pan <laughs> that definitely i would <laughs> i would term it as a privilege i am not sure <laughs> okay <coughs> Now, the next definitely uh, thing that I wanted to highlight over here is that whatever is your purpose, right? When you are going to a public office and uh, when you come out frustrated because of lethargy of work or, or there are n reasons for you to get frustrated and come out of a public office, you are in a state of a mind which is negative, definitely negative, most of the time ne negative. And uh, at that time, you are very impulsive in terms of I, I would be throwing an RTN application on this officer, okay? And that is the reason where, that is the uh, time when you would difficult, uh, draft an RTI application, but I would suggest as a recommendation, don't be impulsive. You, you, can, you can have one guru, a peer, or somebody, definitely not your wife or your spouse, who will always say, mat karo, uh, but somebody who will encourage you to do the right thing, get it reviewed, and and if he testifies or she testifies that yeah this is something that you should pursue then only go ahead with it so it is like having a peer review as a process whenever you are doing an rt application it would help you on a long run okay then second thing is uh, consulting a subject matter expert now this i have specifically written because uh, many a times it happens that the information that you are asking right it is lying somewhere but you are not aware whether uh, it is, uh, and it is lying somewhere and it is easily available somewhere and you are not very much sure. For example, if, uh, if you want to go and have uh, 712 extract, I am from an IT industry, I don't know anything about uh, say 712, how, where, where to get it. I would just write an RTA application and submit it and get it. But then when I am searching or I am going to an architect or somebody else, right, he will just tell me go on this site search uh, just uh, input your plot number or something and you will get that 712 extract just on your screen just print it and you are done then no need to file an rti application and waste uh, uh, your time and effort in in 30 days or whatever but uh, means having consulting a subject matter expert is also a step that you can always follow when you are uh, submitting an rti application Next thing is, uh, now this phrase, paste versus paste, is something that I have just termed when I was uh, preparing this presentation. So when, when you are sure that uh, you want to pursue a objective, you, are, you have defined your uh, final objective, you have get, got it reviewed. Now the next step is to have a plan of action. Now, uh, when, I, when, I, when I'm talking about pace, right, by pace I am saying fast, fast action. So here I am directly going for an RTA application. So which are the scenarios where I should not be uh, stopping myself in uh, filing an RTA application? For, uh, for example, uh, some information that is not available uh, in what you call as section four of the RTI Act, that you can directly ask for that public, uh, from a public information uh, officer. Other than that, uh, if you if you check their website, I mean, if you do not find that RTI application uh, uh, or that information, then you can definitely file your RTI application. Now, uh, the third one is important, update frequency versus your agencies. There is some information which is lying there on website, but it is not updated. Okay, uh, to just you, uh, give you an example, right? Uh, there is something called as master list. Uh, I had filed one RT application somewhere in 2010 to get master list from MADA. Now what this master list has is, it, it, it has a list of tenants who are eligible to get an alternate accommodation because MADA had evacuated their house for various different reasons. So this master list, which is available on MADA's website, dates back to 2010. So definitely, and there is a queue type of a list, right? So you don't know when your number is going to come to get an alternate accommodation from MADA. So if you want to know exactly at this point of time what is my number, you you better file an RTI application rather than uh, waiting for MADA to update their website, which has not been updated for last eight years, right? So definitely, this is a good example where you should 
do a paste RT application. Other than that is your uh, applications, uh, no brainer here, right? Life and liberty matter which relates life and liberty. You should directly go and file your RT application. You will get your information in 48 hours. So uh, uh, in my 10 years of career for RTI, right, there was one case where I had used this, uh, uh, this clause, which was like uh, there was a person who had visited Rajasthan, and he want, uh, it, is, it was his na native place, and he wanted to have a bank account open there. He had visited the uh, bank manager, and they were insisting to have a fixed deposit along with bank account and he was not sure he wanted a fixed deposit and block some amount there. So he had a heated argument with the manager and that manager slapped him. Now after slapping him, the manager may have realized that this person may go and do a police complaint. So he used his local contacts and filed a reverse complaint on that person that this person has slapped me and he, he is like, uh, basically he, he took the fault on, he basically pushed the fault on that person who had gone for uh, getting an account opened. And this person, after having a heated argument, he just went home and suddenly police came to he, uh, his house and arrested him and uh, he was kept under, uh, under arrest for a night. Now, after he came to Bombay, he basically approached us and asked what we can do in this. And I, I drafted an RT application saying that this is a matter of life and liberty. I want a video recording of from that bank, whatever had happened in that one particular hour. So this is when I had used this uh, life and liberty as a case. Uh, basically, the bank manager being himself in charge of, uh, uh, what you say, preserving the video recording, he did not give it. He said our CCTV was not working, and there were various reasons. And he did not basically give it to police either, or nor to the applicant. The matter had gone two levels up, so basically we had filed second appeal for that. But uh, we did not re uh, got the information because according to them, it did not exist. The information did not exist, so they did not give us. <clears throat> so, so just uh, covering or make, making it short, right? When we should uh, do a paste approach is something in, a, in, in, in the situation where RTI is the only option. You have no other option, you go and file the RTI application, right? The second approach is a phased approach. When I say phased, it is like step-by-step -step approach. So over here, what you do is you just don't go and file your RT application, but you explore other mechanisms of getting the information. Because most of the time what we have seen is that people are filing RT applications to get their personal grievances resolved. And if there are alternate ways that are formed by that same public authority to uh, get your personal grievances resolved, then why not explore those? The, by doing that, what you would achieve is the burden on RTI would reduce it would get minimized and and therefore it would help the pendency cases that we have on RTI and of course the other channels will get its own importance because if my issues are getting resolved by a personal grievance mechanism rather than doing RTI then I would not do an RTI right I would take that path yeah so I have Okay, and uh, second uh, good thing about uh, using alternate to RTI is that RTI is limited to public authorities, right? It is just for government bodies. But when you are using this mechanism, the alternate part that I'm talking about, they are applicable to everybody. So it is like even a private sector employee, uh, sorry, a private sector organization would also have its uh, redressal mechanism. And these redressal mechanisms are action oriented because RTI, if you see as a concept, is information gathering, right? It's it it doesn't say that you have to solve that a uh, issue or you have to solve something like a deficiency of service. But when you are doing a formal complaint, it is more action oriented rather than just giving the information or status of that complaint. And definitely, RTI is the last approach. So you it is like keeping a Brahmastra with you just showing it and not using it that's that's how it works basically so uh, i have a very personal ex uh, example on that basically my father was not getting it refund for the year 2010 and i had filed an rt uh, i had not filed an rti i had sent a, a reminder letter to to that uh, assessing officer 
and uh, of course I did not get any reply from them and I just visited along with an R copy of an RT application with a status and progress on the reminder letter and, and the assessing officer was not ready to accept the RT application he just called up his staff member and I got my IT, IT refund processed in next 30 minutes. So that's how IT application just showing an RT application can help you resolve many uh, issues like that. Okay, so what all things I have as my weapons, I am talking about Brahmastra and Indrasa, right? So these are all your uh, weapons that you can use apart from RTI. Okay, so first is definitely just check out to get an information, is there a standard process already defined by that organization? If it is, why not explore that? Okay. Second one definitely is the reminder letter. So if you have applied for a ration card or a passport and you have not got it, why not remind them once before filing an RT application? Third is a formal complaint. So a complaint can be of various natures, but uh, writing it down in a letter would definitely help. Of course, after reminder, you can file a complaint or the alternative is to, they have a mechanism in place. Most of the organizations have a mechanism in place where they address complaints given by citizens or by their consumers or whoever so these are various options right and these are like a hierarchy of options if you see right you can first uh, approach a lower end uh, customer support then it will get escalate if he's not able to resolve it it will get escalated to uh, either HO or RO and so on <coughs> so let's focus on the standard process so most of your standard information uh, that can be obtained right uh, in in a simple application form you just sub submit an application wait for a scheduled time and you get the information if that is defined by an organization that is the most efficient and practical way of getting the information for example uh, uh, if you see right examination sheet getting a copy of examination sheet it is not only from Mumbai University but if, even if you are pursuing CA and you want a copy of your sheet right they have a prescribed format you just have to apply you have to pay some 500 or 400 rupees and you will get a photocopy of your CA answer sheet as well so why not explore that okay uh, I have actually listed many of such examples here so even getting a duplicate copy of your electricity bill landline bill or anything like right? you just have to apply and you will get it is like very immediate if you see uh, the BEST site right if you approach their customer support uh, counter and you just give a written uh, application that I want a duplicate bill of my uh, this month of electricity uh, or whichever for the month of February I want my electricity bill they have to just print it and it will be given to you immediately without any delay. Uh, there is generally a fixed charge for such type of ap applications and uh, I already talked about this right uh, what actually it uh, says about that organization is that they are open for information flow and that's how they would like themselves to be uh, defined right basically this organization is not uh, stopping its information they are open and that testifies that organization as a whole that they want they have laid down such processes to get such information that means this organization is on a right path that way <coughs> Uh, I think we, sh we can skip this, right? These are some links that I have kept. Uh, if you can explore this, uh, you, you would be able to see how you can efficiently get such uh, information. I think I can mention this particular app over here, Satbara Uttara Maharashtra. Now this is an Android app and uh, this app uh, you just have to uh, put your plot number, you have to select your region and of course all, all your geographical things and then you have to just pl uh, put your plot number and you will be seeing a Satbara Uttara that is your 712 extract on your screen. You can take print out and you can use it. But uh, this app of course is not a government app, it is, it is a private app and uh, you, you should use it with caution. Yeah. Okay, so, so now moving to the next point uh, which is like reminder letters. Now once you have followed a standard process of getting information or you have written a normal letter and you are asking for some uh, thing to be done, right? Like a complaint or a delivery of service and nobody is acting on it. 
second next right thing to do is send a reminder and not jump to the RTI application directly. Why I'm saying this? Because it, it solves two purpose. Purpose number one is it is giving a second chance to the officer to act on your application, right? Because then the officer cannot say, okay, this info, I did not receive your application because you are just reminding him of the same application again. And second thing that which is good point about is that you can you can write what is the possible action you are going to take after this letter is getting submitted. So it is like I am going to submit an RTI application next. Please do the needful. And then it, it may basically work, right? The, it, the way it worked for my father's case. Uh, I would recommend you should submit at least one recommend, uh, reminder letter, if not two, for whichever complaint or whichever uh, application you have made to any uh, private or public body. <coughs> Next thing is the complaint letter. Uh, now, once you are applying for a passport and you have sent a reminder and you have not received a, a passport yet, then the next right thing to do is write a complaint right so complaints can be for uh, various reasons right it can be personal reason it can be a, a general public uh, interest type of a reason if you are passing from a, a footpath and you see there is a big pothole why not take a fo uh, photo of that pothole and just lodge a complaint so that way it can be a general complaint as well as personal complaint <clears throat> I, I've just listed some examples there Uh, a sam sample complaint letter here. Now this complaint is is a live complaint we had done from our center. It was uh, at the Hinmata flyover. Beneath Hinmata flyover, there was a lot of uh, pollution and things like that. So we had uh, written a formal complaint to the ward officer at F South. The next thing is to approach. So now complaint was writing a complaint letter in your own format is one thing and utilizing some mechanisms that are already in place for registering complaint is another thing. I would I would definitely suggest this thing because what it does it de is that it basically gets registered in their system and it can be monitored, right? So, uh, so if you see over here, right, again, there is like a hierarchy of uh, 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 levels. So you can first approach the normal customer support. Now, this customer support can be like a phone number or it can be an email address. You can just write a complaint to them. Uh, most of the times, there is a CMS system uh, institu institutionalized in an organization, which you can, what, what I mean by CMS is complaint management system. So the first person who would act on your complaint, right? Who he would basically try to solve your complaint. If he is not able to solve the complaint, you can escalate it to a nodal officer, which is again in that same organization, but a person who is at a higher level, and uh, he can be sitting in a regional office. The next level, of course, can be a head office person. If if it is not solved at that stage also, then the next thing is like an ombudsman or consumer court. Now these are uh, two different tracks. You cannot approach both of them simultaneously. Ombudsman requires you to file at least uh, two complaints in that same organization and then only you can approach ombudsman. Similar is the case, case with consumer court who will deal. There are dif different criteria for going to consumer court. I think I, I have a slide for that as well. Then these three, last three, right? Regulatory authority, ministry, CMs, and PMs office. I would not suggest them as a complaint mechanism system because they have other things to do. But if if your issue is something which wants uh, or which tells that some policy change has to be made, then you should definitely approach them. For for giving an example, right? Uh, we uh, at Tarun Mitra Mandal there was a case where uh, Mediclaim 2007. Uh, we have an activist called Anand Nandu. He was pursuing that case, and uh, what he saw in in one, he his father had Mediclaim 2007, and what he saw there was, it, may, uh, it was with New India Assurance Company, and they had uh, abruptly changed the policy terms and conditions for his father. Many of the diseases that were covered with the older terms and conditions were 
without any intimation to the consumer they were just removed out in a new policy and that is when he had done lots of rtis with new india assurance company and he had also approached regulatory body like irda to to tell them that this policy change is not uh, in terms of good faith or it is not in terms of the uh, rules and regulations that are laid down by irda and that's how uh, those are not applicable so those changes are not applicable and we had got good amount of success in that particular case story <coughs> so moving forward now this is one example of a private sector insurance company i have i have uh, taken a private sector because i want to just uh, re emphasize the same thing that consumer grievance system is not only for public authority it is applicable for both public and private authorities and icici lombardy is one of such examples it is an insurance company uh, if you go to their website you, you they have a very processed and documented uh, they have good documentation on their website it will show you that uh, first you have to uh, uh, just write to this customer support email id and they will try to resolve your complaint and if you are not satisfied with that then you can escalate it now this escalation you don't have an email id but on their website if you go right they they have a web form which you have to fill up with your complaint as a reference and uh, second escalation is with the vice president and then of course if you are not satisfied with with the actions taken by both or all the three levels right you can approach the insurance ombudsman uh, it, it is like the lokpal for insurance industry and of course iid and ministry of finance are always there you can write to them <coughs> this is another example uh, now this example is for mcgm uh, if you see right mcgm if you, uh, is a unique organization in itself because if you analyze the number of rt applications all over india which public authority is getting most of the rt applications number 1 would be definitely mcgm if not number 2 okay but or at the same time it has the best website which is having most of the informations available online so so definitely there is some mismatch there but that's how it is because because of the ambit of work mcgm is doing right <clears throat> they have a good helpline 1916 and and this works basically if you see i i just told you right if you see a pothole you just have to click a photograph and you you can just uh, log into this cms system or you can just call up that 1916 number this both the methods are avail available for you and you can just tell them this this is the complaint i want to see i see a gutter line open i will just call up 1916 and tell him the exact location and they will immediately come and solve that issue so 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 this is very effective and it, it doesn't uh, even if the, it doesn't one rti is always there right as a last step so but i have seen much of the issues are getting resolved using such helplines okay the third third method of complaint registration is uh, of course for people who do not uh, know 1916 or who do not know how to use uh, computers they can of course uh, go to the customer they call it as cfc counter that is a uh, customer facilitation counter and then you can just go there and write an uh, normal complaint letter and they will document it and they will give you a document id which you can use for follow ups okay Uh, there is a good mention of Lok Shahi Din. Now, Lok Shahi Din is something that has been propagated for various public organizations, and uh, and MCGM is one of those. It, Lok Shahi Din is available for police as well. So, uh, and this is uh, like they they allot a day of a month. Okay, and uh, on that day, a person who whose issues are not getting resolved can approach them, and they can directly talk to higher level people. For example, if you see right, uh, but they have a process uh, in place. You cannot just go and approach those people directly. You have to first do some complaint mechanism before approaching or reaching to that step. Because if the issues are not getting resolved, then only higher management people should get involved in such type of uh, cases. is right so if you see right at ward level there is usually on saturdays once in a month they have a cgr meeting where assistant municipal commissioner would look into citizens issues whoever approaches them 
on if if you are not satisfied with whatever uh, proceedings uh, assistant commissioner at ward office level is doing you can approach the deputy municipal commissioner's office he he basically conducts lokshai din third monday of every month okay and and even if these two are not uh, helping you out right then this is the last option that you can explore which is like the municipal commissioner who who normally is available on first monday of a month to hear to the public grievances but you cannot approach directly unless and until you have passed through the lower stages <coughs> so the next uh, is uh, pg portal or aple sarkar now pg portal is mostly for the central government and aple sarkar is for maharashtra government aple sarkar both of them are basically online tools where you can lodge a complaint and this complaint can pertain to various departments so it is covering a good ambit of uh, uh, sir, uh, departments or ministries under it so if you just explore this website you will know more about it Aple Sarkar is a dual purpose thing. It's not only about grievance mechanism, the way PG portal is, but it also gives you right to services. That means you can not do your normal application like uh, having a, a birth certificate or something which is very trivial, right? Just a normal application that also you can uh, you can do with your right to services. That is a service given in Aple Sarkar, and Aple Sarkar is available in both web as well as app form, mobile app form. Okay. Now, what these type of uh, mechanisms do is they just do nothing. <laughs> When I say nothing, is like they just take that application or that complaint, okay, in a computer system, and they forward it to the relevant department. So, effectively, what they have done is nothing. But ineffectively, or ineffectively, you can say. But what it achieves, the purpose over here is. the complaints are getting forwarded from a high level to the bottom level instead of top bottom up approach it is like a top down approach right so if if an email is coming from a uh, pg portal it is like somebody some it is something like a pmo office writing to a uh, passport office that please look into this so definitely the impact is much more second good thing is that these are monitored and reports are getting generated out of it so how many complaints we received and how many were solved and in what time frame these all things are getting analyzed monitored and reported so that basically adds to the effectiveness of such mechanisms okay any question so far uh, we can take questions later fine this is for the thing i just had one comment yeah whenever there is a letter sent by the pmo the town of official there is a one note below that please keep us informed yes yes so the person who is receiving the letter is mandated to give to that exactly applicant as well as to the pmo, P PMO. so that is how it was effective correct that's when the monitoring and reporting part comes into picture right exactly okay so the next thing i wanted to cover is ombudsman now what is ombudsman definitely it's an authority which is appointed by the government uh, it can be appointed by public uh, uh, what you say private uh, organizations uh, as well and the main objective of them is to look into complaints okay we we call it as lokpals and lokayukta or sometimes it is also referred as chief vigilance officer the the ombudsman now this is an outsider to an organization that that way he he or she has a neutral view for for, for a complaint so it is neither from the applicant side nor from the uh, from the uh, what you say organization side and uh, that's why it's it's a neutral body and it is most cost effective it works like an arbitrator who would quickly resolve a given complaint on 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 its merits of course now uh, we have very limited ombudsman in india a uh, few examples are banking ombudsman uh, insurance ombudsman income tax anti corruption and electricity uh, this is what i found on google but uh, apart from that i don't think there are more uh, ombudsmans 
next definitely is the regulatory authorities now ombudsman on one hand are more specific for managing or looking into complaints of a consumer or a, a citizen whereas regulatory bodies have multi purpose right it 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 is more into forming policies for those specific industries or sectors as well as they also look into uh, issues of uh, consumer type of disputes so rbi sebi try irda these are some examples of course the recent one is the last one in the list rera which is very much consumer specific <coughs> and being the last one right it has a added advantage that everything is online for for the last one so application forms and uh, follow ups and everything is computer based next option that you can explore apart from iti is consumer courts right now consumer courts of course again applicable to both private as well as public bodies and uh, but it uh, it it has a limited scope in terms of it is applicable only to consumers there is specific definition for consumers and there are specific cases which they would entertain okay for ex these are the three cases that they would look into unfair trade practices where uh, where basically they are mis selling you some product uh, and you want to complain against it then the defects of goods or deficiency of services so these are the three specific cases which they would entertain okay and of course there are various levels of consumer courts district level state level and national level now when we say district state and national it is not that you cannot directly approach a national level you have to go step by step but it is more in terms of the claim amount that you want to be reimbursed out of a dispute so if the claim amount is less than 20 lakhs you have to settle it in a district level consumer court if it is between uh, 20 lakhs to 1 crore you have to approach state level and if it is more than 1 crore that means the dispute size is much bigger then you have to go for the national consumer dispute redressal commission fine Sensor, suppose if we are not satisfied with district consumer, can we go to state? If even it is below 20 lakh? Uh, I don't think so because uh, it is anyways limited to the amount. So if you are not satisfied with the order of a consumer court, then the next step is definitely go on a legal course of action rather than uh, escalating it to the national. But I, I think maybe we can check explore that option as well. Sure, I think one can move. One, maybe we we can cross check that. I have to search for that. <coughs> okay, so so after talking about all the various options that you can explore for grievance uh, mechanism, right? Now these are some tools. These are not definitely grievance addressal mechanism, but these are some tools that you can use. or there are some sections in each of these tools or uh, documents that you can use for effectively writing a complaint or effectively writing an rti application okay so citizen starter is one such tool every organization is bound to uh, publish a citizen starter and i i will not elaborate much on this because the next presentation or next seminar that we are conducting next week is specific to citizen starter i think manish uh, gala is going to uh, conduct that session the next is uh, public records act now this again is a act very much similar to rti act uh applicable only for the state of maharashtra for now but uh, it has various clauses which talks about how the records have to be maintained by whom and what is the procedure of maintaining maintaining those records and if you use the clauses that are available in public records act in your rti application the rti application would be very much uh, sharp in in terms of getting you information And then there is something called as Transfers and Delays Act, which is also called as Act 21 of 2006. And then in, then the MMC Act, which is nothing but your Mumbai uh, Municipal Corporation Act. So again, these two acts uh, are vast in nature, but there are specific sections in these two acts which you can use for getting your uh, applications or your complaints uh, processed faster. Okay. 
So I can talk about uh, some of those here. A citizen charter now, uh, this is a sample citizen charter. Uh, as I told you, I'm not going to elaborate on uh, much on this topic because next section, next session is entirely on this topic. But this is one income tax uh, uh, office's citizen charter. Uh, if you, I'm not able if you are able to read it, but uh, you always have this link. Uh, if you just go to the last column over here, right? For every action or every type of application, you have a specific time timeline defined into citizen charter. So this basically defines your wait time. You have applied, wait for two months, then you do the follow. Okay? And you can always specify I waited for two months as per your citizen charter in your application or now this is another example of MADA MBRRB that is a, a repairs board where it is also talking about how much time and who is the person who is responsible to take action on such type of cases. <coughs> so uh, going next is the Maharashtra's Public Records Act. So as I told you that this act is a much bigger act but I am just going to a specific section over there which is usable for us in terms of uh, what you say escalating or having an effective RT or a application complaint or something. Section 4 says that every document or every record, uh, now this is pertaining to Maharashtra again, okay. So every document or record has to be indexed and categorized. Now this is very much similar to what you have in your section 4 of RTI Act, right? Where again every document has to be categorized and indexed. <coughs> and it also specifies that if you, you, even in a given course of time, right, the aim of that public authority is to get computerized. All the documents have to get computerized and they have to be getting updated on websites. So the disposal, so the number of RTI applications can go down. People have all the information on websites and it is easily accessible. Okay. Section 6 says about duties of records officer. So when, when uh, now these duties is a very short term, but if you explore section 6, right, it will talk about how the information is created, how the information is maintained, how the information should be destroyed. So all the things are covered very elaboratively in this act. Okay. So every, as I told you about categorization, right, by categorization, every record is categorized as uh, A class, B class or C class. And when you say A class, it is like the time frame for maintaining is lifetime so for example just to give you as an example right so information like uh, plan of a building is a a class or a category type of information or record which they have to preserve they cannot destroy b class can be destroyed but the time frame would be much larger and so on okay and now the most important thing is section 9 which you can effectively use in your complaint which says that you can actually uh, take pen penalizing action on the erring officer okay so there are provisions of up to five years of jail or even penalty of 10,000 to the officer who is the records maintaining officer for negligence of duty so and both even both is applicable so these type of sections if you are writing in your complaint right it will be much more aggressive in terms of your, your complaint would be much more aggressive and much more effective because the person is on the back foot right in that terms <coughs> now this is another act called transfers and delays act 21 of 2006 now this act has a very big name it is a short form transfers and delays act uh, but again, in, in, in this section 8 is something similar where it talks about every organization in Maharashtra should, now again this is for Maharashtra, every organization or public authority in Maharashtra should publish and update citizens charter and there was a specific time period given for this. This act is of 2006 and time frame given was a year. So by now I think every every Maharashtra public authority should have a citizen charter, right? Second is the section 10 of the act which says 
no file now when we talk about file it is an it is not a physical file as such it is any paper which is like an application or a complaint no file shall remain pending with a government servant for more than 7 working days that means you cannot sit on a file waiting for some prime to move on you have to process that file get off your desk in 7 working days okay and the total time for that file to move across various desk is not more than 45 days. This is specified in this act, which we can effectively use. So if, if you find that some organization doesn't have a citizen's charter, you can use this act, where you, the maximum time waiting time for you is 45 days. Okay, that is one more case. If if it is pertaining to different departments, then it is three months. So if it is in the same public authority's premises, the file is moving just by different officers, then it is 45 days. If it has to move to different departments, then it is th three months. So maximum 90 days is what you can think of. Okay, again, penalties or what you say as teeth given to this act, which is not there in the RTI Act, of course, which is more information oriented, and this is more action oriented, is that preliminary inquiry. So if somebody is not following this three months of mandate time to give you the final results of your application or your complaint, you can ask for a preliminary inquiry against that officer, why he has not processed your application or your complaint. Okay. <coughs> The second level is departmental inquiry, which is much more dangerous than preliminary because it is conducted by a higher authority. And the final one is the disciplinary action. And, and people do fear because uh, it is like a black dot on their career. So having a disciplinary action against an officer. So definitely all, all the public officers, right, they are very much uh, concerned if a disciplinary action is raised against them. Uh, this is a sample complaint letter. So uh, this this letter is something that I have got from uh, Information Commissioner Shailesh Gandhi. He is the person who is advocating or promoting this act. He wants this act to be used widely, Act 21. So this is like I have given my application, but nobody has acted upon it. And hence, I have waited for some time frame. And hence, I, I am demanding a preliminary action uh, inquiry on a, on the hiring officer. So this is a format. Uh, now, now Act 21 basically is applicable for all the Maharashtra public authorities except uh, municipal offices. But for municipal offices, there is a another act, which is uh, for Mumbai, it is 64C. So that is the section in Mumbai uh, Municipal Corporation Act, which has the same clauses so as Act 21. And for other than Mumbai, all other municipal co corporations, right? you can use section 72C. So the format remains the same. All that is highlighted in red, right? you can just replace in case of Mumbai municipality, you can replace it with the first line. In case of other municipalities, you can replace it with the second line. So after covering all these rights, so I talked about different avenues that you can venture out other than RTI. And if no, no, nothing of these works, right, RTI is of course there. Your Brahmastra is always with you. You can use it, right? But uh, what I mean to do over here is you should use RTI more sensibly. Wherever it is absolutely required, you should use it. But by doing that, you should also explore other avenues and make other other avenues also more effective the way RTI is. That way burden on RTI would also be in level terms as well as the other importance given to other avenues like citizens uh, uh, PG portal or, or say consumer uh, grievance me mechanism. Even they are getting the due importance and they in, in a given frame of time they will also be getting better and giving you results. Okay, so if you are filing an RT application, right? So this is a very win-win type of scenario that we want to highlight here, and this is the final objective that we always uh, uh, try to promote in all the RTS centers, all the 11 RTS centers that we are conducting every week. Uh, that the applicant should get the information. That is his right. 
okay but it doesn't stop there you have to make friends with the pio so that any other applicant who is going to the same pio he is also getting that information so that's the process that's the mindset change that we want an applicant to you are not going to fight with the pio you are going to make friends with the pio okay by doing that what you are doing is that you are helping in the process of good governance if there is some process lag and you want to change it you and the pio together you are brainstorming and coming up with a solution henceforth okay and then you should acknowledge the pio for the good work that is the final aim that you should aim after as an rti activist okay so so rti has definitely lot of power in it you have i have talked about big big scams and very trivial issues everything can be covered or can be uh, uh, what you say can be achieved using rti applications but all this is important while all this is important we need to learn to use the rti act in the right way thanks